Alrighty y'all, so move to the garage. I, for one, have better lighting, so this is a better view of that Mauser. There is a decent bit of surface rust. That is one thing that is a drawback about this. Bore and chamber in excellent condition. Uh, tolerances are good. I'm going to get a field gauge and a go gauge, or a no-go gauge rather, for this to make sure she is actually safe to shoot. Uh, this is the replacement bolt. Pull that baby out. She is perfect. Uh, fire and pin's good, extractor's good. The extractor on this particular mill shirt was busted. I'm gonna set this over here. So I was like, shit. I was scurrying through the interwebs trying to find a replacement extractor. And I could have just gotten that, but I had a feeling uh, I live here in California. So I purchased the firearm. I had to wait 10 days to pick it up, just pick it up this afternoon. And uh, I noticed that, shit, the uh, firing pin's busted. The spring's a little wonky. I have it disassembled upstairs. I'm going to try to make a video uh, seeing if I can repair any of it or gain replacement parts because having two bolts, I guess, is nice. I might sell one of them if I can get them both working. But yeah, she is a Spanish M16, or Jesus, an M1916 Spanish Mauser in uh, 7mm. So it is a very, very interesting piece of history. Uh, this one has been well used, well carried by the look of it. Uh, it is sporterized, so these particular models, to begin with, only have the stock out to about right here. Eventually, once I get this cleaned up, um, I'm going to try to disassemble all the wood furniture off of it and see if there's anything underneath the hood that I should be concerned about, but hopefully there isn't. So I'm going to show you what I've been doing. As you can see where all of this surface rust is up here, I've been taking it and uh, essentially sanding it. I've, I've been uh, using a series of different brushes. So I've been using this coarse nylon brush along with very lightly using this uh, brass bristle brush. And basically just getting the surface rust off of there and putting a layer of protectorant, uh, CLP or REM oil will work. There are better products out there, but I'm kind of balling on a budget. This is kind of like a little budget rig for hunting. Uh, seven millimeter can basically take anything up to an elk. Check your local listings on that. So we're going to get to it and uh, see how she looks at the end of tonight. This is going to take probably a few days, if not a few weeks, to get this baby up and working. So stay tuned. All right, let me fix this camera here. Excuse me for all the sweat. It's quite hot in here. It is uh, mid-June here in California, so it's getting a little bit hot. Um, as you can see, we've made a decent bit of progress here in the receiver. I've gotten a bunch of the surface rust off of the frame, and now I've got a thin layer of this break-free CLP on it to just, you know, preserve it, and then I'm gonna wipe it down again before I put it up. Basically just making sure no new rust forms on this. Honestly, this is in a lot better condition than I originally thought. A lot of it was just uh, that, you know, original surface rust that was covering up most of the receiver and the barrel, wiping it off. And honestly, it doesn't look too bad. You do have some minor pitting um, on some of the receiver, like here on the side where the shells eject out. Let me show you. But nothing uh, too, too bad. Honestly, it's not going to shoot like it's brand new, but uh, it should be pretty good. I'm going to get to work and then give you guys one more update before I turn in for the night. Uh, like I said, it's going to be a multi-day process. So stay hey guys, I want to show you something. So if you do find one of these old mill serps, um, especially Mausers or Mosins, whatever, anything with that's a bolt action, this goes for ARs too if you're shopping. In there, that little ring right around the beginning of the bore typically is pretty caked in carbon if these things haven't been properly taken care of. And unfortunately, I'm dealing with a decent bit of that. So I'm trying to clean all of that out. I felt in there though, and there's no, really no pitting. There's a little bit of surface rust where that port is, but I've cleaned that out a good bit. So uh, we're gonna get to it and see how much we can get done tonight. Alrighty y'all, it is day two of doing cleanup on this Spanish M1916 Mauser. I have a few, to few tools that will assist us now so I can actually disassemble this and get a better idea of what I'm working with, uh, get a deeper clean and all that good stuff. I have a small little vise here. This is meant for a drill press, but it will suffice for what we're doing today. Need some cardboard to cushion it a little bit, but not bad. I'm gonna start with taking off the end cap on this muzzle, uh, this little sight protector. Definitely need to get that off, get the rust from under there. But yeah, let's get started. So some of the tools I have 
Like I said, a little nice. I have some double lot steel wool to help get some of the surface rust off. Something that's not super aggressive. Just got my little cleaning towel, Mickey Mouse towel sort of thing, a little thing for my uh, punches here. And I have this little Irwin set of punches, uh, 1 16th ounce to a quarter, Jesus, 1 16th inch to a quarter inch. So we're gonna pop that off and get going. This is going to be a long video, so I hope you stay tuned. Oh, awesome. I'm going to start off, like I said, working on this muzzle cap. So I'm going to turn the camera off. So what I am trying to do is, you see that pin right there? You push it out from right to left. So I'm trying to push that out and take this uh, side hood off and uh, get under there. And I'm going to take the barrel bands off and all that. So let's get to it. Alrighty. So I do have a cardboard uh, little right here to assist us. I have my vise set up. Tighten it down just a smidge. Just enough to keep the workspace stable. I'm going to put a few drops of CLP on here. Uh, some of this break free stuff just to hopefully loosen up any of that rust that's in there. Open this up. I've got my little punch here. This is a 1 16th inch punch. Should fit quite nicely. Let me rub that in. Seems to be quite stuck in there, so I'm going to see if I can get any of that CLP in there. Try to see what's going on. Open this vice up, work a little bit on the other side. Oh yeah, that's a problem right there. I've got a good little bit of I'm gonna take this wire bristle brush and scrub the living hell out of this. And you can already see a good bit of surface rust coming off of there. Good thing about CLP, it typically brings a decent bit of the rust on the surface. I'm just using some of these tools to assist in that venture. I really want to get this side hood off. I'm not too big of a fan on these, since this is going to be a deer rifle especially. It is kind of bent too, so I'm going to take it off and see if I can fix that. If not, I'm going to keep it off. But if I can fix it, I'll put it back on eventually after I get the entire work piece cleaned up here. Looks to be pretty good. Put another drop or something on there. You just want a drop. A dot is a lot, just like in elementary school with your Elmer's glue. So definitely don't want to go overboard with this. Make sure it's right here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do full disassembly today, but I'm going to definitely try to. Need to get a better vise, but for now, this should work just enough. Do the same work on it. I'm just trying to break enough of that rust free so that the CLP can get down to that little pin channel and hopefully get that out of here folks. Move that side over. Kind of organized chaos, but we'll make it work. We're making some progress with it, so that's definitely good. This thing probably hasn't come off since it was manufactured. Still pretty stuck in there. Let's see if there's any way I can try and break that free a little bit more. Here, let's do this. Let's take this cloth out of here because I actually do need it to clean the rifle a little bit as I go. And I'm going to take this cardboard. Essentially, what I'm going to do is just make a little bit of padding to the rifle. That way, we can uh, 
Dang, I'm banging up the wood anymore. I'm thinking about replacing stock on this. Um, I've looked into API. They have some synthetic stocks that are working on these, but I'm not too big of a fan, if I'm being honest. They kind of look bulky and ugly. So I think I'm going to either stick with this original stock, which is supporterized, unfortunately. I didn't do it for all you keyboard warriors out there, so I don't even get me started on that. I'm not too big of a fan of supporterized rifles, but this was a good deal. And for just doing a little bit of work on it, it's not too, too bad. It's kind of like redneck science here is nothing specific but just enough to cushion all right take our little towel clean some of that shit off of there and we are making some decent progress on that so i'm going to put another drop of that in there just a little bit up just a bit Make a little bit more progress. I can feel it start coming through on the other side. I think I'm gonna loosen this up and see if I can clean that other side off a little bit more. I'm gonna put you guys on time lapse and uh, show you guys when I'm done. All right, so we finally got that little pin out. So you can see it's quite rusted in there. So we're gonna clean that out and get that side hood off. Stay tuned. Alrighty, set y'all up right over here. Excuse me, my tripod's being a little bit funny today. There y'all go. Okay, so pin that came out is mangled to all get out and slightly bent too but there's rust all over it so I can tell that it's uh, not in a great shape we are going to take some of our tools here now I've got steel wool rem oil and CLP open up that CLP so basically I'm going to lube and just scrub all that surface rust off to get that side hood off. So stay tuned and I'll uh, show you guys when I'm finished. Alrighty y'all, so that is the front side hood there. As you can see, she's quite rusty. I'm gonna clean this up. I'd like to put it back on, but I don't know if I'll be able to. So uh, let's get to it. Let's uh, keep cleaning this. I'm going to start on the barrel here and then I'm gonna work my way back. And she, she is quite rusty, so let's see. I'm gonna put her back in the vise. Took quite a bit of work to get that dang thing off of there. Yeah, honestly, it doesn't look too, too bad, though. I'm honestly surprised. It's pretty good. Where is it? Yeah, yeah, let's just clean it like this. Okay. Boy, oh boy, I've got some steel wool here. This is double odd. So it's uh, kind of coarse, not too bad. It's uh, not as aggressive as some of those uh, copper wire brushes I was using, which is probably better for an older gun like this. So. What I'm trying to do essentially is bring up all that damn surface rust. Looks like it's doing a pretty decent job of it. I've got some good old I'm all here spray on that. Okay. 
honestly, my goal today is to work down to where this barrel uh, scales up and gets a little bit thicker, as y'all can see right there. Uh, maybe even take apart this barrel band and separate the stock from the actual firearm itself. So I'll put y'all on time lapse and uh, show you when we make a little bit of progress. Stay tuned. Alrighty y'all, so I just took off the upper handguard and there is a good bit of rust under there. I'm probably going to have to get a new upper handguard but for now, she'll do. Uh, I'm probably going to refinish this too, honestly, since it's kind of a beater. But honestly, I paid 100 bucks for this, so you know, what can you expect? So I'm taking out the set, sh set screws. Honestly, I might go to the hardware store and pick up some simple grain in a little metal tub and just soak the hell out of that shit. So, that's one set screw, let's hopefully, thank God. This one doesn't feel like it'll be too, too hard to get out of. Now, I'm not using the best quality tools for this, but they are hollow ground, which is typically what you want to use when you're doing this kind of work. That way you don't mar up your screws too bad. Just take it nice and easy. I mean, these guns are... 70, 80 years old, maybe even older than that. So. Okay, there's that rear screw. Okay. Lift the action out. There's your action. And then you've got your, see how we're gonna get that out of there. I don't know if that's a pin or what, but I'm gonna leave this for now. I'm gonna look to see if there's any cool markings on here. Uh, I know that the Spanish did have a fascist uprising, I think of the 20s, so we've got some history and there can be some cool markings. It looks like we have a, a four or an A3 written on the stock here. Pretty neat. You have a 1-3 on the base plate of the magazine here. It's kind of neat. I'm going to try to push this stuff out. Okay. It just slides out. Might need to get the mallet on here in a second. Uh, I'm probably gonna hold off on this and work on this later, but we can take our stock, our upper assembly, and our uh, little follower here and send it over off to the side and we're gonna get started on the action. Let's just say it looks like I have my work cut out for me. <laughs> so that is our barreled action. Um, I'm just going to do the same thing I did up here, uh, use some rim oil and the steel wool and get to scrubbing. Stay tuned. Hey all, so I have made some significant progress on this. Uh, I've gotten all the surface rust off the barrel. I'm going to go back through it before I reassembler. Uh, cleaned up the front side post. There's a little bit of corrosion on that. It's all like pitting, but not too, too bad. Barrel's a little bit chewed up by corrosion. It is still serviceable, though. It's only surface damage, so I don't really have to worry about that. I've worked a little bit back here. The sight block is looking a lot better. Still have some work to do around it, but not too, too bad. We can clean up this little ring right here. But something I wanted to show you guys is I found some cool markings. Let's close this sight. The back of the receiver here, let's see if the camera will pick that up. We've got some numbers. Now the locking ring, or not the locking ring, the ring that holds the upper handgun 
upper hand guards on is different so this is not a matching gun and it wouldn't be anyways because the bolt i got is different but it's pretty neat honestly i've cleaned it up quite well and i mean something about the spanish mausers you can tell that this was a wartime gunner you know built during the rest because the rough machining marks i'll tell you what it is not built to the, like the same quality as like a mauser or something so well like a german mauser at least so um definitely unfortunate to see that but let's finish cleaning it up and uh see what she looks like when we're finished and cool too is just to see where like they ground off some of the uh markings i know that on some of the models i've seen online they have like a swastika or something down here which i can't make that out but i think that's a five right there but a lot of times they have to ground off these markings because if these fall into the wrong hands and are used in a conflict, they don't want to be in association with them. So it's pretty neat. Uh, starting to clean up really nicely, actually. Besides the surface damage, it's in very, very good shape. Another one of the markings I found is back here on the tail end of the receiver. But yeah, I'm uh, about right here. I'm going to work my way back and uh, finish up. Then we can start on the stock. Alrighty, y'all. She is pretty much done for today. I've gotten like... 80% of it done. I just need to swab the bore and the chamber again with a brush, but I can do that once I assemble it. But I uh, cleaned off the screws, barrel band, and all that good stuff. And it is looking a hell of a lot better than it did. I'm going to go over the barrel one more time, make sure there's no surface rust at all, and then I will put it back together. Alrighty, I was finally able to get this out. A lot of surface rust. Uh, got some work to do, but we're going to get to it and knock it out. Flipping rust off. So, we've got my steel wool here. I should probably be wearing gloves because it's probably giving me little micro cuts, but at this point, I'm tired. I don't give a crap. I've been at this for like two and a half, three hours. Uh, it's not as bad as I thought it'd be, but still pretty bad. So, I'm going to spray some rum oil on here and get it all nice and lubed up. Take this and just get all that flipping rust off. I like to work on one part at a time and then move on to the next part. After you get your desired, desired result with your steel wool, I got a microfiber cloth. Wipe it down. You can actually see some of the patina in the old metal finish. They did it coming through. This is like really crappy machinist work. I don't know if you can see just how poor and rushed this you know, was when it was assembled. Yeah, very, very poor. Now, the pitting is slight, but it's on the magazine. Uh, so you re it's really not that big of a deal. It's not, even not that severe. I mean, maybe like four thousandths of an inch. Uh, just mainly surface rust. <laughs> it's kind of ironic. All the old folks be like, oh, you need to take care of your guns, sonny boy. And then I find guns like this that I have to, you know, fix up and get renovated. But honestly, I'm not... not um, you know, not too disappointed with this. Honestly, a little bit of work, and I'll have a fine shooter, hopefully. Alrighty, let's do the other side. Steel wool again. Show you. I'm going side to side and up and down with it. Just trying to get all of that flipping rust off. Using a good bit of pressure, too. Alrighty, I'm gonna put y'all on time lapse and turn you back on when I'm finished. Stay tuned. Alrighty, y'all, I have finished cleaning it. Now I'm gonna de disassemble it again another day, but I have other obligations I have to take care of. So I'm going to open this vice up and reassemble it, and I thought I'd show you guys how, and in case I forget, I can rewatch my video. Alrighty. Kind of slow, but uh, like I said, this is a drill press vice right here, and it actually works somewhat well, so it'll be a good fixture to hold, you know, my firearms. Open it some more. Got a little washcloth in here just to cushion it here. I just need to have that holding this stock just enough. I'm not trying to break it. I just need to simply reassemble. Make sure 
sure I get that all the way back in here. Oh, shit, yeah, I gotta put this like so. Just like that. Awesome. So I'm going to put these set screws in now. Boy, god dang it. Let's put this back in. This one, the long one, goes in the rear. Keep your any windows to yourself. My goal is to take it apart, or put it back together the same way I took it apart. Jesus. I need to get like a, a bench rest or a rest for the rifle. I think that'd be a lot better. A lot less for me to worry about too. Okay. Make sure this is all in there square and such. I believe it is already. Put this bottom screw in here. Awesome. Now I did clean her up just a hair with oil right after I, well, I already cleaned it. I just lubed it up a bit. Just enough to make sure we don't get any unwanted rust in there again. That's not good. Don't do what I just did. Make sure it's in there nice and tight. Double check this rear one. Good. Gonna make sure the barrel band's good. Put it back on. Now, the way you put this barrel band back on, well, actually, no, I was thinking about the barrel band. Oh, my dumbass. I almost forgot that I needed the rear handguard. Or the top handguard, Jesus. My mind's all over the place to get today, guys. Excuse me. Clean this out just a little bit. This thing is extremely dry, so I definitely need to refinish it at some point. So you're gonna take it like this, put it on, slide it in there. It's nice and flush, which is good. Take this, make sure the screw head is up. This will be facing towards me, the left. Since this is a carabiner or a carbine, uh, the sling points are on the left side of the rifle, so you can sling it over your back when riding horse or uh, mechanized vehicle. Since this is a 1916, they didn't still use horses then, however, so that's a pretty neat little factoid for you. Now, I've got my other screwdriver here. Make sure I did inspect this thing to see if there was any splits in the stock, and thankfully there were none. I am probably going to invest in a different stock though. This one is kind of beat up. I, I'm gonna finish it first and see if uh, it looks any better and like fits better, but there is some dry rot on the inside of the wood. I did take a look at it, tried to clean out as much as I could. Awesome. Tighten that baby up just another hair. She needs to get a little bit tighter, but then should be good. Dang it. Definitely don't want to strip these screws, that's for sure. This is as good as she's going to get right now. Alrighty, she already looks so much better. So I'm going to throw the bolt in here and show you 
quote unquote final product. Let's bolt. And she looks so much better from when we started. So I will definitely be sure to keep up the cleaning process and probably clean it again in the next few days. But yeah, she's all ready to go. Heck of a lot better looking than when I first picked her up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, please do me a huge favor before you guys uh, leave this video and subscribe, like, share, comment, and please.